Welcome. Before we get cooking on this episode on emetophobia, I need to take a minute or two and do a little bit of an introduction that I normally wouldn't do because it kind of matters. So stick with me. Over the past several days since recording this episode, I've had the opportunity to have a really lively discussion on the topic with many of you across multiple social media channels. And I'm super grateful for that because I've learned some things and those are the things I want to address now before we start to listen to the episode. The first thing that I want to say is that it is quite clear that this is a topic that needs more attention. So for those of you who are suffering with emetophobia and have been for quite some time, let me acknowledge that you are kind of that this issue is sort of the redheaded stepchild of the anxiety community. You've been suffering a bit in the dark with not a lot of information and not a lot of attention. And for that, I can only apologize. We need to talk about this more. That is true. The other thing that I have learned is that there is a fair amount of resistance to the idea that emetophobia is actually treatable or can be overcome. And I've learned that that resistance is rooted in the deep core level emotional fear of this particular topic that makes it seem like it's somehow special, unfaceable, and insurmountable. Let me say this. Your fear is real, and your experiences as an emetophobe are real and valid. They matter. I would never take them away, invalidate them, or try and sweep them under the rug. However, I want you to understand that just because you fear this thing at such a deep level that you consider it special or unfixable because it seems unimaginable for you to face it, I want you to consider for a second that an agoraphobic, for instance, feels exactly the same way about leaving the comfort of their home and walking into a crowded supermarket. You may look at the agoraphobic and say, I can see how afraid you are. But I don't necessarily understand why you're afraid because I know that you are okay in the supermarket. Well, in the end, when you start to feel as you're listening to this episode that this is absolutely ridiculous and that it cannot be fixed this way and what Christia is talking about sounds like punishment to you, it's cruel, it's horrible, it's a nightmare, I want you to consider what an agoraphobic would think looking at your fear of being physically sick to your stomach. They would understand how real the fear is, and they would sympathize with you, but they would not necessarily understand why this absolutely unpleasant experience has become termed a nightmare for you. So what I'm going to ask you to do is consider for a second that you are capable of overcoming your emetophobia, and I want you to take some of those preconceptions and the resistance Honoring the fact that those preconceptions and that resistance is based on emotion and experience, and those are real. I'm not discounting them. But I want you to take a few minutes and try and put those to the side. Pause the episode if you have to. Take a break if you have to. But allow yourself to hear what Christia has to say. Because what she is saying is not unique to her. It is actually the experience of many, many people who have solved this problem. And I would hate to see you completely discount it simply because you suffer from the misconception that your fear is somehow more severe than someone else's just because it's based on the topic that you are have is closest to you. I want you to remember three things that I talk about all the time, and then we're going to get going on the episode. Just because we think a thing doesn't make it true. Just because we feel a thing doesn't make it true. And just because we fear a thing or don't like a thing does not make it invalid or incorrect. So do your best to put aside some of your preconceptions, honoring your experiences and your emotions, and allow yourself to hear what Christia has to say. Hopefully you find it at least inspirational or that there will be a glimmer of hope in it in you. Maybe you'll find it educational. Maybe it will change things for you. But regardless, I appreciate you taking the time to listen, and I hope in some way it has an impact on you positively. So let's get going. Dudes and dudettes, welcome back to episode 132 of The Anxious Truth. Today we're going to talk about a topic that gets thrown at me continuously, and that is emetophobia, people who are deathly afraid of being sick to their stomach or vomiting, and many will tell me that they cannot recover from their anxiety disorder because they have emetophobia and it is impossible, but today... We have my friend Christia, who is uh, active in our Facebook group and has been listening to the podcast, and I've gotten to know a little bit, a lovely human being. She's going to talk to us about how she overcame her emetophobia as part of her recovery process. So if you think you cannot do it, listen up. Before we get to it, you know what I'm going to do. 
The book is called The Anxious Truth, a step-by-step guide to understanding and overcoming panic, anxiety, and agoraphobia. You can find it at theanxioustruth.com slash recovery guide. You guys have heard me say this before. Go get it if you need help, because I think it's super helpful. And if you've gotten it and it has helped you, then by all means, review it on Amazon or something like that. So that was good. Only a minute, and we're going to bring Christy on right now. I'm going to unmute her. So here we go. I'm going to get right into it. Recording it live. She has been patiently listening to me do the silly intro to the podcast. <laughs> so here we go. Christy, uh, welcome. Happy Sunday morning. <laughs> welcome aboard. Thank you for taking the time. I'm excited. I'm excited to have happy Sunday morning, Drew. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so you're coming to us from the East Coast of the U.S. in sunny Maryland, somewhere in that neighborhood, right? Yes, yes. Maryland, correct. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> let, let's get right into it. Uh, so you heard me do the intro. Emetophobia is like a wild card topic. And so many people will say to me, like, hey, I, I appreciate what you're doing and what you're saying, but I, it's not going to apply to me because I have emetophobia. So therefore, if I experience any sort of stomach-related anxiety symptom, all bets are off. I can't, I can't fix it. Not true. Not true. So let's Not talk about true. let's talk about your <laughs> overall situation with anxiety and especially the emetophobia. Fill me in. Where were you and where are you now? Okay, so my anxiety actually started like twenty years ago. Okay. <laughs> so I have been stuck with this for like twenty plus years, and I know a lot of people think it's a death sentence with you know the emetophobia, um, and that it's like you know a special. I don't know if you can see me, but you know a special case. <laughs> you know, air quotes. <laughs> It really, it really isn't. Um, it's nothing special. It's you, you go through all of the same steps, you know, as one would go through to get rid of just like uh, regular general anxiety. Right. Um, Cause I know like it's, it's like a health thing, like a health anxiety. Um, but for me, it was like, I couldn't be around it. I couldn't, I could not say the word vomit. Yes. Very common. And now I can vomit 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 <laughs> you barf, i can say it all you know that is actually very common so for people who are listening that feel like well their emetophobia is worse than everybody else's because they can't even think about it you were there nope. you were there oh yeah. yeah oh yeah i i couldn't be around it i couldn't like my 13 year old for example um back when i was living in new york he got very sick like and he hardly ever gets sick yeah so but it was like you know once in a blue moon and he vomited all over and i had to call my parents i go dad you gotta come over you gotta you know and yeah. they took them and my dad cleaned it up and then at that point in my life i'm going wow christy like what the hell is wrong with you yeah. <laughs> like yeah that's your own kid you know yeah and of course you know and i have a 17 month old and he hasn't you know gotten sick yet you know and i'm probably jinxing it but that's okay though yeah um I can handle it you know i can handle it right um and for me it was reading your book and I did, I finished it. I actually have it right here. <laughs> way, you know, people, you know, are not thinking, oh, she's just full of it, you know, things like that. Nope. I have there my copy right here. I can I can I can confirm. I am seeing a copy of my oh, book. Yeah. Oh yeah. So oh, I have that. And that really helped me. And but for the longest time though, so my issue was I had the issue where it was very hard for me to to float. Okay. <laughs> so that was my issue. And the floating. Um, and then. Yeah. But let, yeah, let's, I just want to explore a little bit. So the, the emetophobia, the fear of yeah. intense fear of, of intense fear being of sick to your stomach, vomiting, yeah. being around it. Being around it, smelling it. Yeah. Let's hearing. talk about this, the, you know, what that actually meant. What happened when you were confronted with that? Or are we talking about oh panic God, symptoms, would, the the whole nine yards? Oh yeah. I would, I would get insanely nauseated. Oh my Lord. I mean, like I would. I would flee. I would flee. Like, yeah, I would literally. Run. Yeah, yeah. Literally. literally. Yeah, literally. Yep, yep. Literally. Uh, just terrified. I mean, it's, oh, yeah, just, just completely and utterly terrified. And then I would feel sick for for hours after. You know, I'm like, yeah. oh, my God, I'm going to throw up. I'm going to throw up. You yeah, know? yeah. It's like, so, but it never happens. Right. And in emetophobia, one of the, the key concept there is that it's almost a specific phobia. Because a specific phobia is a fear of something, like we said, very specific. But in the end, it does get attached a lot of times to these other anxiety disorders, like panic disorder or agoraphobia so it's also non-specific in that way but the fear there is is driven by the fact that the interpretation of being sick to your stomach vomiting or even seeing somebody else or hearing about it is a catastrophe it's the worst thing that yeah. could possibly happen it cannot be allowed so just the same way that somebody might look at like a no please i should never be shot in the head same kind <laughs> of aversion to that i can never let this happen ever that in itself vomiting is a disaster that must never be allowed to happen 
That that's what exactly. drives that, correct? Okay. Yep, and that's exactly how you feel. It isn't a metaphor. That's exactly how you feel. Yeah, yeah, it's impossible. So, what about the rest of the whole anxiety situation aside from the emetophobia? What what was going on there? See, and I think it had to be like the anxiety that I was getting. It had to be tied in to the emetophobia because once okay. once I overcame that emetophobia, honey, I've had no anxiety. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Now, did you find that one of your key anxiety symptoms was stomach related, which it is for yes. like a yes. zillion people? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yes. It was that. It was like the racing heart, the sweating palms and feet. Right. Um, like the sometimes I would get like the derealization, yep. you know, that would hit that would hit me. Yeah. Um, but the majority of the time it was, oh my God, I'm gonna throw up. I feel sick to my stomach. Oh my God, I can't do this. I can't do this, you yeah. know, type yeah. deal. Right, right. And it would go on for hours. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And in, in many instances, what's crazy and it's not crazy i shouldn't use i never try to use it crazy but you guys understand what i'm saying here what's hard oh, to yeah. understand or hard to fathom about this is that it becomes a vicious cycle so i'm afraid yes. of my stomach and what it might do and when i'm afraid i get fear symptoms which all human beings do and unfortunately those symptoms can be focused on my stomach so the fear creates the symptom creates the fear creates a symptom and it's just like a fire that fuels itself it, is, it goes right around in a circle right and so the way we would break that is the same thing you guys have ever heard me say about just about every other anxiety symptom, we have to actually face the worst possible thing that we think could happen, which would be in this case, vomiting or being sick or being around somebody who is so what was tell me the path that you took here? What? How, how did this <laughs> oh, resolve for you? And, and I'm guessing it was bumpy at times. That oh, it was it was very bumpy and dicey at times. So the road I took, like besides with reading your book, yeah. Um, while I was reading your book, I actually I I did. I was I was fortunate enough to where my my um medical my medical would cover it. Yeah. Um, I did see a therapist who specialized in EMDR. Okay. And let me tell you, the EMDR do. The MDR does work, but I bought her a copy of your book yeah. as well. So she got to read along with me and we did like all the steps listed in your book. Yeah. So, so I think I had like that extra, um, what's what I'm looking for? The extra, I, w I don't want to say like safeguard, but like, mm -hmm. the, like the, maybe like that extra step, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Because I had, I had an EMDR specialist. Um, but you got to remember though, this is something I have gone through for over two decades. Right. Right. I, let me you ask know, you, so. and you, you don't have to answer this question because we, we were going to talk about emetophobia, but Oh, is yeah. there is there a, a tumultuous past trauma abuse that sort of stuff going anything like that with my ex-husband yes okay I, I was yeah. going to say EMDR actually there's a there's a reasonable amount of of research that says that in the trauma resolution thing it could be super helpful so I'm really glad you did that yeah I am too I'm lucky that I you know I feel like lucky you know that I got the chance to be able to do that because yeah. like I said my medical insurance actually covered it oh wow you know you know, for that and everything. Yeah. But the main thing was, though, was it was your book, though, and Claire Weeks's books yeah. that helped me, though, the majority. So let's talk about because that. I didn't see her, you know, until yeah. I was already way into the books and everything. Oh, you, you are. Know, okay. Yeah. Okay. So you, yeah. you started doing the code of facing and floating thing. Then, uh, yep. then and enlisted I the aid of the like, therapist. Yeah. I just let, like how when I messaged you on yeah. Facebook there and I said, Drew, I'm in a metaphor. Well, what do I do? Tell yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, you're not special. It's a special case. <laughs> and I'm like, I know, I know. Uh, so, and I did, I kind of, um, so for the people out there suffering from it, I, I just like, I woke up one day and I'm like, you know what? I go, this is beyond ridiculous. I said, you know, I'm tired of being afraid of, of, of something that, 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 happens to everybody regardless because it's it's a human like burping and farting you know it's, it's all you know normal bodily <laughs> function true so i was just like I'm, I'm i'm done i'm done being afraid i just woke up i'm like i'm done being afraid and then i then i'm like you know what i'm gonna you know try to get myself like into a panic attack like into panic mode yeah and i tried and tried and tried and i couldn't i'm like okay you know so then normally it happens at night yeah. so it happened that night and you know what i sat there and I just, I like, I kind of like laid in my bed. I'm just like, okay. I'm like, just come on, bring it. Like, right, come and get me. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What else, what else can you do? And nothing happened. It went away. I found that when I did not fight it, yeah, it went away. <laughs> and, and this applies to not just the, all the anxiety symptoms, but that sensation of like, oh, and the thoughts of, oh my God, what if I get sick? What if I vomit? What if I vomit? I'm guessing. Yep. I, Who did, cares? Did you resign? You had to resign <laughs> yourself to the fact like, well, maybe I will. 
Like I did. I did. Thanks to your words. I did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so what did that describe? You, you said earlier that you had a hard time with the idea of floating. And is this what you just described sounds a whole like like floating or what we would call that floating. was floating. I think that was the first successful time I have floated. <laughs> I actually remember you talking about that. You posted about that. You were excited. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was the first time I was successful with actually floating. So <laughs> what was really what was the difference between dude <laughs> copper has to weigh in um what so what was the difference between that time when you did float and all the times before what do you think that what was the key i know what you're going to say but what was the difference because i kept fighting it and fighting it and fighting it yeah because i did that's what i did i'm like nope no nope and you know i had i had a whole slew of like zofran i mean i have ibds yeah, anyway yeah. yeah so but i mean yeah so but they you know Oh my God, that would be my go to. I'd be like, Oh my God, I need to take Zofran or Oh, I need to take Pepto or No, no, stop. Put the brakes on. You yeah. don't need that. <laughs> and, and just so for people listening, the Zofran is uh, anti nausea. Anti emetic. Right. Anti yep, anti emetic. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's, yeah, yeah. So, but it's like, you don't need it. Like, put the brakes on. You, you don't need the medication. You, you don't need it. Right. This is something that you have got to just let flow, like, let flow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And yeah. I probably look really stupid, you know, doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, most people are only hearing this. So go ahead and make all your <laughs> oh, <okay, cool. laughs> mime all you want. Uh, but I'll have the video. We can maybe post it in the group or something. So, okay. So this is kind of cool. So you, you change your path and you decide, I'm just going to go limp kind of ragdoll like we talked about in the group and like, come get me. So oh, yeah. what did that feel like? I'm guessing describe the terror that you had to ride through. Oh. Whoa. Okay. Now oh, we need yeah. video because that was uh, that facial expression is right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. oh, my tear on a scale of one to 10 was probably like a thousand. Okay. So I got my, my boyfriend obviously is in the bed next to me. He's, he's passed out and that feeling comes over me. I'm going, Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. You know, so the tear, and I'm like, but then I'm like, no, no. I'm like, you know, let, let's, let's, let's back it up here. Let's pause for a second. Just, you know, take a, a cleansing breath, Christia. And, you know, we're going to, we're just going to roll with it and see what happens. You're not going to reach for that Zofran. You're not going to reach for that Pepto. Yeah. You're, you're, you're not going to wake him up and be like, oh my God, am I going to be okay? You know, you're not, you're not doing any of that. Yeah. You don't need to. You're almost 40 years old, girl. <laughs> like, yeah. I, and and it, I, I let it wash through me and I was beyond terrified. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, I know I probably went rigid a couple of times, um, but then like I tried to, you know, yeah. like, nope, nope, just you know, all, all normal, all all normal. Like we don't get to just Fighting, declare yeah. ourselves relaxed. You have to keep, no, keep releasing, keep releasing. Oh, yeah. So I understand the terror, the ro <clears throat> the roller coaster, the terror when that moment, there's always a moment when you do that. And especially when you do it for the first time, the tipping point where you oh, can yeah. start to feel yourself feel better. Like, you know, you've hit the peak and it starts to come down. I did that moment. I did. I hit that. Yep. I hit that peak. And that was probably a good two hours in. I'm not going to lie. Okay. That was a good two hours in. So it took quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. But I felt that peak. Like you were talking about, I felt that peak. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. I go, did I really just like yeah. do that? I go, yeah. oh my God, I did. You yeah. Know? Yeah. When you feel and it, I rolled over and fell asleep. Yeah, I rolled over and fell asleep. <laughs> that, yeah. Because at that point, you're exhausted because it does take oh, a lot yeah, out of exhausted. you, of course. Oh, yeah. But yeah, that it's first really time good. you do that, whether you're, a, you know, an emetophobe or you're just dealing with the rest of the regular anxiety complex, that first time that you take that leap of faith and say, well, just come and get me and don't yep. do anything. When you feel like, oh, I'm starting to feel better now, and you know that it is ending, it's like, rawr, like you can't, you're a superhero, that feeling. Oh, yeah. And I did, I like, I rolled over, I passed up a bit, but I remember before that, I go, I go, damn, I go, I'm a badass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's such a good feeling. But, but let's be clear about this. Like, it wasn't, you didn't cure your emetophobia in that moment, I'm sure. How, yeah, I'm sure you had to repeat no, that, yes? No, no, yeah. no, yeah. So with emetophobia, and especially since for me, when I've had, like I said, for 20, you know, 20 years, um, it's not an overnight thing. Yep. Um, people may think by what I just said that it was like an overnight thing, but it really wasn't. It is hard work. Yeah. But you do have to dedicate yourself to it, like a little bit at least. Yeah. You know, you follow, you know, the the instructions that you've written to a T in your book. You know, if you have a therapist, you know, and they specialize in EMDR, I would say take advantage of that because that that really did benefit me. Yeah. And I and I was and like, and I was afraid. I was afraid because that process, you you, 
you talk, you say the like saying the word vomit, throw yeah. up. Yeah, I'll yeah. check bark. That's the first you know step, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And then you know it, it slowly progresses. So wait, let's let's go over that for just a second. That's super important. Yeah. So you're working with your therapist, EMDR, uh, um, eye movement. I can never remember the, the eye movement descent, 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 de <laughs> desensitization. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ooh, the desensitization. Wow, yeah. desensitization. I don't remember the, I don't I don't remember the <laughs> but it's, it's an eye movement technique that for those who are not aware, e, first of all, let's clarify EMDR is not tapping. That's EFT. So EMDR is because a lot of people say, Oh, EMDR is at the tapping thing, which I see your face. Oh, like, yeah. okay, like no, EMDR like is not tapping. tapping. <laughs> EMDR is an eye movement thing. It's a lot of times it's a, it's a therapy that's used to treat things like PTSD or yep. combat vets use uh, EMDR sometimes. Oh yeah. What you're describing here is actually using the words vomit, puke, bar, That whatever, I never was able to. While you're engaging in this technique. So it, it is yep. a slight variant in that whole exposure and response prevention thing because you're going to confront those terrifying words at the same time that oh, you're yeah. trying to eliminate the, <laughs> the, the emergency response. And in that case, you replaced it with the eye movement <laughs> relaxation tool. Yep, exactly. Is that accurate? Exactly. I just want to make sure we're describing it accurately. Oh yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So and like I said, because I know a lot of people um, with emetophobia, they can't even say those words. Right. They can't even say them. Right, right. You Did know, you... and that's that's a huge like success and win for them. Like once they're able to. Right. So uh, it's important to I think for people to understand and, and correct me because I wasn't in the room with the therapist. I want you to. Oh, I yeah. want us to be accurate, but. Um, the, the, it isn't just a thing where you sat and, and moved your eyes around and suddenly everything got better. You were literally confronting your fear while using that tool. So yes. it is not a passive thing. It was active. Did you use any other like, you know, simulated exposure, pictures, sounds? Yes, I was going to say I got into yes. it. We got we got into um, so after, you know, using the word, you yep, know, yep. quite frequently, because yep. in this and it's a process, you know, so then it was then we went into pictures then we went into sounds and then finally I graduated and went into full flown watching somebody on YouTube like a real person. Yes, yeah, not fake actually vomit. Isn't the isn't YouTube amazing? You can find anything. It is. I know you can find ev like anything you, and everything on there. You would think that like, <laughs> hey, like, I could I find, uh, right, I could find videos of people vomiting on YouTube. You would think, oh, that's terrible. Yeah. But in this case, yeah. oh my God, a therapeutic tool. Who knew, right? Thank you, internet. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, but I like that. I really like your description of what your therapist had you go through. That was hard work. That was not just sitting, being soothed and, and moving your eyes back and forth. You were confronting nope. the scariest shit that you had at the moment. Oh, I did because I had had enough. Yeah. I'd had enough. Yeah. I'd had enough of being a prisoner in my own mind like that. I've had enough. Yeah. There you go. I did. So, <laughs> so describe the progression. Now you're working on the stuff that maybe I wrote that clear weeks wrote. by the way, I didn't, I didn't have Christia on because she read my book. Like, I just want you to know no. how she fixed right. It had nothing to do with my book. <laughs> I didn't invent anything in my book. Um, so anyway, no. in, in the end, you, you read my book, you read the Claire Weeks book, you bring this therapist on, you're doing the work in therapy with it. I'd like to talk to your therapist one day, by the way. Yes, I've already signed a release, by the way. <laughs> Look at you ahead of the game. I love it. I love it. Um, but she has your book. I bought it for her. That's why oh. she went along with me. And yeah, yeah there you go. We write and kind of like read it together. Yeah, you yeah, know, but yeah. I mean, I'd already, you know, almost completed the book by the time you right, know, right, that right. I. <laughs> yeah. So excellent. So what happened? Tell me some of the challenges as you went through, because it's one thing in therapy, super useful. You know, but then what happens in real life as you're going about your day? I mean, how often did you have to deal with that? Use the tools, surrender, See, let it happen. Mine was only at night. Mine's only at night for okay. some reason. Yeah, it's like a nighttime thing. Yeah, I, it's so bizarre. Whatever. I, I have no idea. I don't even care what the root cause of it is. Just the fact that, like, I'm, I'm on that, you know, that road, though, to where I'm nowhere near where I was you know, 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's like. So that road, and, 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 and it will get a little bumpy for people because you're going to be, okay, so you, you you come out of your therapy room and you're like, oh yeah, I'm a badass, I got this, you know? Yeah. And, but then, and then you have like the tools and everything that you're given, like either via books or, you know, via yeah. your therapist or anything. And then it actually happens again and you're going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You know, so yeah. you're like, yeah. you're going, oh my God, I can't do this. But the thing is, you can. All you have to do is employ what you were taught. Right. It, 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 it's, it's simple, but it's not. <laughs> like, well, 
<laughs> it's it is simple because you, you have it's like in in American football. There's a playbook. The team has books of plays. This is we run this play in this circumstance. Oh yeah. <laughs> so third down and seven, we, we run this threes four plays. Pick that one. So it's the same thing, but it's hard because it's scary and you don't want it's to. It's hard that. because it's yep. It's hard because it's scary yeah. and you have been conditioned for x amount of years to be like oh no nope i'm, I'm, I'm gonna fight this you yeah. know I'm, I'm i'm not doing you know i'm gonna fight this i'm afraid but that's what it is it's that whole that whole response and like you we talked about it's that whole circle that vicious circle that yeah. keeps going and going and going and you gotta break it you gotta find a little chink in the you know in there and you gotta break it yeah yeah and that's exactly what i that's exactly what i did Let's go back for a second, for 10 seconds and remind people who are listening, who are, who are still either being like super pumped up and ready to go over this, which I hope, or shaking their heads because like, but vomiting, but vomiting. Let me just repeat again. That is a thing that happens to all human beings at some point in their life. We don't want it. We don't like it. We don't want it to happen again. Nobody enjoys it. We all hate it. But it is not a disaster. So we have to call out that fear. If you, if you are emetophobic right now, and you are still thinking that, like, there's no way I could do what Christia did because, you know, vomiting. Well, it's not a disaster. You just have decided that it is, even though it's unpleasant, that is all. So the $100,000 question that I know we're 21 minutes into this <laughs> that somebody's going to ask is, have you? Have you yet? Have you, I hope you haven't because that would mean that you were sick. You, weren't, you were sick. But have, have you been sick to your stomach yet? No. Okay. No. So what's amazing, there's two <laughs> no. things about that. Number one. What you worried about happening never actually happened, right? So we got to call yes. that the irrational prediction of the future, oh, which was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and second of all, but that's real because that, that's a real thing. I, and I think that in the end, the true test of that is what happens when the day comes that you eat some bad egg salad and whatever. So I think I'm. Re I think, in all honesty, yeah, though, that yeah. I'm, I'm I'm ready for it. I, I have okay. Zofran, yes, but I'm I'm not I'm not polluting my body with that. I don't need it. Yeah. it I look at it now. If my body needs to eject, you know, it needs yeah. to eject something like it means that it was no good for me. That's right. why. Very good. It's See, that's doing, my difference. body's doing what it needs to do, what it's supposed to do, what it, what it's what it's meant to do. <laughs> right. So in a way, the mechanism of this, and a lot of people will say like, oh no, emetophobia isn't treatable because you can't expose yes, yourself to it. <laughs> but you can. Like it's true. And the reason why we say you can't expose yourself to it is first of all, it is not ethical for a, a therapist or a coach or whoever to make you vomit. No. That you can't do that. No, no. Right. That's not a that's not a normal state. So you can't intentionally make that happen to expose yourself to it. But you can systematically desensitize yourself to the idea of it, the sounds, the feelings, the words, the descriptions. And you can work every time that you have that panic that panic response to the thought of it to squash that panic response. And begin to have a new realization of the fact that, like, well, I, I don't want that to happen. But if it does, it happens for a reason. It'll be over just where, where you are now. So, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it is treatable. It's not easy because for some reason people hang on to that symptom or that bodily function like it is some sort of special thing. I don't understand why that is, but they do. Like, no. Yeah. Can't and that, that, yeah, yeah, I have no idea why they do either. But yeah. I mean, I did. I mean, clearly, as you, you yeah, know, you, for, you were one of those years, yeah. I, yeah, I was one of them. Yep. But that's the whole thing, though, as I do want to stress is that, guys, for the emetophobia people, it is not a death sentence. It's not. Right. You can, you can overcome this. Like, seriously, you really can. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, just, just letting the, the nausea or the tingly tummy or that, that, that sensation when you let it come and let it go. <laughs> You know, it's a regular, and we, we're not going to rationalize it because everybody in a million years, if you guys are listening, you've been told a thousand times that being nauseous while anxious is normal, but you still aren't going to buy that. You can no, only learn, <laughs> right? You can only learn to not be afraid of it by doing what Christia has done over and over and over and over. So, oh yeah, that's why I was gone for a little while there in the group, yeah. but I hadn't like said that. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I was like working on myself and oh, get because I'm like I gotta help people. I can, you know, that's or try. great. That's really great, <laughs> and I can attest to the fact that you truly like you're such a kind soul. I've seen you, you know, be very generous in trying to pay it forward monetarily sometimes, and in a lot of different ways. Oh, yeah. And now, uh, which I appreciate, <laughs> I really, really do. So let's talk about how, what a difference it has made in your life. What's different in your life now? Oh my gosh, I am able to do so many like more things like that. I like, okay, so I know I said mine's like a nighttime thing. Yeah. But like now though, I'm going to bed like at a normal time. I'm just, I'm going right to sleep. Yeah. Um, and then like, I mean, I would have it where I would get it like during the day sometimes, just like out of the blue. And so then I would, oh, no, I gotta go run and hide, you know, go hide in my house. 
And I've never been like an agoraphobic or anything like that. I love being outside, you know, everything. So with that though, lately, um, I've just, I've gone outside. I've done what I've had to do. I've, you know, I've been spending time with my little, my defiant one that I call him, <laughs> my little defiant one there. So, and it's like, you know, and I, and, and yes, and I may anticipate the day where he actually first, you know, gets sick or whatever, yeah. but you know what? I can handle it. I can deal with it. I can do it. Yeah. I can do it. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you will. It's as simple as that. <laughs> I have no doubt. You know, once you uncover that inner badass, you can't really put a cork back on it. Like, sorry. Yeah, it's exactly. just there. Sorry. It's there. You're now you're a badass. Too bad. Deal with it. <laughs> so. bad. Very good. Very good. What else do you want to add? Anything in particular that you want to give people advice on or, or throw it out there? If, if, if so, if, so for the people out there with the emetophobia that are suffering with the emetophobia, like I said, it is not a death sentence. You can recover from it. Um, yeah. It is treatable. Yep. And if you are able to get, you know, Drew's book, obviously I endorse that a hundred thousand percent. And also if you, you know, have the insurance, you know, or, or even if you have the money, you know, to go, you know, see an EMDR person, I would, I would highly recommend something like that as well. Like in conjunction with, with the book. Yeah. Because like I said, those two things really, really helped me. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then the Claire Weeks books. So, and that's, that's my little thing right there. But my other, another piece of advice would be, do, do take it one day at a time and be kind to yourself, you know, but don't continue to live, you know, like don't continue to live like in that, in that mind frame that, oh my God, I'm, I'm never going to get better. Like this is, you know, something it's, I'm, I'm stuck with it. You know, you're not because it, 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 it is beyond so treatable. Like I can't stress that enough because it is, it's beyond treatable. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's, it's going to take, you are going to have to do work obviously right, you know, right. to, to get past everything but once you do it oh my lord you are going to feel so much better and so liberated excellent, excellent. <laughs> i do that is real life experience from someone who has lived it walk the walk you know talk the talk over and, 20 years yeah. yeah 20 years and now now doing so much better I, thank you so, so much. much i really i cannot tell you how much i appreciate you taking the time to do this Oh, not a problem. It's been my pleasure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, what I'll do is you're in the group. So this will get posted. And if uh, you know, if, if you're in the Facebook, oh, yeah. group, by all means, I'm sure Christy would be happy to answer questions. You're very giving that way. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I'll yeah. answer anybody's questions. <laughs> so we'll put it that way. If you're seeing this, you know, by an Instagram post or whatever, ask me the question, I'll pass it along and we'll do what we got to do. Thank you very much. I'll, yeah, I won't make perfect. you listen to me record the outro. I'll do that later. So <laughs> <laughs> all right, my friend, you were awesome. Thank you so right. much. Not a problem. And you don't know more questions that, that you had or anything? Just making sure. I don't think so. I think we're good to go. Like you pretty much, okay. you nailed it. You described it very well. You were easy. You're easy to interview. So. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> All right. I'll see you the next time then. All right. See ya. Yep. Okay. How good was Christia talking in such detail about how she dealt with her emetophobia, which I know so many of you struggle with and think that you cannot overcome, but she did it. And I, I'm going to stress again, she did it with the aid of just, she was armed with some good knowledge. Yes, she got some of it from my book, but wherever you get it, get it. And, and she did enlist the aid of a therapist. I cannot stress enough, though, she worked hard in therapy. She didn't just sit there and move her eyes back and forth and magically cure her emetophobia. She had to confront the things that she feared. And when we do that, and we do it productively, and we learn new ways to react to it, or more specifically not to react to it, magic stuff happens. And it happened for her, it could happen for you too. All right, guys, that is it. I'm going to play you out as usual with my friend Ben Drake doing Afterglow, facebook.com slash Ben Drake Music if you want to learn more. If you're listening on iTunes or someplace where you can rate and review the podcast, do me a favor and rate or review the podcast because if it's helping you, ratings and reviews help other people find it as well, and that's why I do this, to help as many people as I can. Thanks for coming by and spending time as always. I will see you guys in the next episode. All around you, you can breathe it in. And this is where your story begins. You got the feeling that you're gonna win.